First things first. Going by the natural flow of this book, The Calculus of Friendship by Steven Strogetz, dealing letter correspondences between a teacher and a student, at the outset, I would like to profusely thank Steve for his encouraging words through his reply email on this podcast. It means a lot and keeps me reading through the chapters back and forth. Hello everyone. In 1976, Steve and Joff have been mathematically chasing each other with some real interesting stuff. Steve has been in search of his pursuit working out multivariable calculus, cycloidal problems, during which he stumbled upon the actual pursuit problems, that is the chase problems. All of us are quite familiar with chases and escapes like a child playing hide and seek or police and thief, a cat chasing a mouse or a cheetah chasing gazelle, a guided missile pursuing a jet. These chase problems are called curves of pursuit. As Steve mentions, it's all about translating practical problems or ideas into workable mathematics, which formed as impetus for Newton to create calculus. In fact, when Newton started formulating the planet's movements, various forces acting on them, keeping them in motion, led to breakthroughs in science. So in case if you are attempting at these chase problems where there is a continuous movement, feel elated that you are in the company of Newton. Sounds appealing and keeps us going continuously, isn't it? Now, onto the notion of pursuit curve, which is a trajectory of a moving point, say D, the dog or the chasing plane. The movement of which at every instant is oriented in the direction of another moving point, say C, the cat or the chased plane. The trajectory of this is called escape curve. In general, movements of dog and cat are considered to be uniform with speeds VD and VC respectively. The inherent conflict of such chasing and escaping that is of the battle between the hunter and hunted is a basis for at least half the fictional writing in the world. And to put it simply, human existence is said to be filled with number of chases and escape activities. Say it may be the romantic pursuit of a future spouse or to the military pursuit of a target to be destroyed. So, problems of this general sort are of interest to rocket launching, military community, video game designers and so on. Historically, the curve of pursuit is said to have been originally proposed by Leonardo da Vinci in the form of a cat and a mouse chase, but was first solved by the French mathematician Pierre Bouguer in 1732. As a student, one gets exposed to this kind of problems through differential equations sometime during sophomore undergraduate level. However, these problems typically obtain a differential equation in the first and second derivatives and then solving it by making a change of variable. This becomes more interesting for both students and teachers while trying all permutations and combinations with the variables and all these could be connected to number of real life applications. But sadly, these are not dealt in the classrooms generally. To make it interesting in classrooms, teachers might try referring to movies which have real gripping car chase scenes like Gone in 60 Seconds, The Fifth Element, The Rock and back here in India, we would have come across a number of Bollywood movies and down south interesting chase scenes could be seen in Singham 3, Thani Urvan, just to name a couple, which exactly emulate these pursuit curves. So it would be easy to relate how these works. Stephen Joff felt the necessity and importance of demonstrating chase problems which must have led them to discuss three such problems during the year 1976. The first chase problem that Stephen Joff had discussed is the simplest case with the escape being linear. That is, the problem goes like this. Suppose a postman is trying to escape from a dog chasing him and he runs away in a straight line starting from the origin at a constant speed say v. Whereas the dog starts at a point somewhere off that line and runs with constant speed w instantaneously swerving in such a way that it is always heading straight toward the postman's current location. So when we try to comprehend this problem, we might think of three possibilities. Dog and postman running at the same speed, dog running at a speed greater than postman and dog running at a speed lower than that of postman. Intuitively, we would immediately comment that if both are running at the same speed, it is a distance between the dog and the postman that matters, which will be constant as shown in green and the catch is not possible. Whereas, if the dog is running at a speed faster than the postman as shown in red, then we would be interested to compute how long did it take to chase or in other words the distance of the dog to run in order to catch the postman. Whereas, if the dog is running slower than the postman, the dog catching the postman is almost not possible as shown in blue. 
mathematically the solutions would appear as shown here which requires deriving the differential equation and then solving it by separable and integrating it explaining the formulation solving requires a bit of time which is worth as a separate video by itself the second problem by all means must be very close to Joff as he himself being a kayaker. Yes, now there is a man in a kayak paddling across a river which flows with constant speed whereas the kayaker travels at a constant speed w relative to the river. He targets to reach a certain point on the opposite shore. He always aims directly towards his destination even as he is being carried down by the river current. How would you construct a path taken by the kayaker? In case if you are a swimmer, you could think of swimming across a river and imagine the path that you would be swimming. Formulating the differential equation and solving the same will result in one of the following possibilities. If the river velocity is lesser than the kayaker velocity, he still reaches a target after a diversion as shown in the plot with a lesser than 1. Whereas when the river velocity and kayaker speed are the same, then the kayaker still reaches the bank but some, somewhere at the mid of the target. And if the river velocity is faster, then he gets closer to the bank but never reaches it as shown in this plot which is a greater than 1. Steve winds up 1976 journey with a chase problem in a circular trajectory which is again a quite a popular one and have been worked out by various mathematicians employing different methods. The problem goes like this. Suppose a dog at the center of a circular pond sees a duck swimming around the circumference. The dog chases a duck by always swimming straight toward it. In other words, the dog's velocity vector always lies along the line connecting it to the duck. Meanwhile, duck always swims as fast as it can around the edge of the pond, moving counterclockwise. Trying to mathematically formulate this problem results in differential equations as shown and solving these equations one might end up with different possibilities. That is, when the dog is at lower speed, it seems to follow the duck for a while but then the dog path always gets stuck in the same circular motion with radius being the product of the relative velocity and the radius of the pond independent of the starting point. The second possibility is that when the dog is running at higher speed and starts from inside the pond, then the dog would sneak up from behind whereas if the dog starts from outside the pond, it is possible that the duck will swim directly into the dog's mouth that is would be a frontal capture. The third one is when they both travel at the same speed, the dog will approach the duck asymptotically thus never catching the duck. Though it appears to be simple and straightforward one, arriving this needs a lengthy and systematic derivation of equations. So max classes could be made interesting for both teachers and students by working out these problems from the scratch and devising their own methods to solve which will give immense satisfaction at the same time may also give a trajectory for some more interesting problems. At this juncture, I would like to fondly recall Francis Godwin's story, The Man in the Moon, which was published way back in 1638. In that story, an astronaut harnesses a wedge of 25 swans, flies to the moon. The swans fly at a constant rate and always head toward the moon in accordance with their animal migration. Thus, the trajectory from the earth to the moon is not a straight line, but it is a pursuit curve. In the story, Godwin says that the flight to the moon takes 12 days, whereas the return trip which follows a straight line takes 8 days. So we might wonder if it were a good guess. In 1968, Apollo 8, the first manned craft to circle the moon, reached the moon in 3.5 days and returned in 2.5 days. Well, astonishing, isn't it? To wrap up, this vision of the world that everything can be viewed as an accumulation of infinitesimal changes is a most revolutionary understanding of calculus. Thanks, Steve, for this wonderful and insightful chapter on chase problems. Hope many teachers chase problems in this trajectory and see you all with yet another journey of mathematical pursuits.